Hello creators and makers, this is The Random Engineer. Today we're going to continue with our dog kennel series. We're going to pretty much finish the design and then just leave it uh, so that we're so that it's ready for our uh, fastening features. So as we talked last time, what we're going to do is copy this separator, which is going to be here, and just going to drag it I'm gonna hold on control and drag it to the assembly. I'm gonna do that four times. Yeah, that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So I'm just gonna put it in position. Oops, there you go. That's one side done. The other one, and finally, the other one goes like this, I think. That side, this side, the other corner. Okay. So we're gonna just put it here, like we were doing before. And then, uh, just for now, we're gonna use a in this case, sorry, I'm gonna we're gonna use a mate, but this is gonna be created for all of the mates, so that's gonna say multiple mate mode. You just have to select which mate you want to create on the first reference for this one, and then you do the same for you just click the other ones, and it will create the mate for all of them. As you see here, that's what it's doing. Instead of trying to click on each and every one. Just click on one. Okay, so I'm just positioning this. Go. Finally, these two. These two faces must be together. And that one and this one too. There you go. So that's the top part almost complete. Bottom part could be a little bit better. So I'm just going to measure the distance from there to there, which is 20. And I don't know if I should do the same for the bottom part. So that's flush there. So it's 10 here. Yes, that's 10. And up here it's 20. Okay, so let's create one part that will be enough for both sides. And that's gonna be 10 by 20. 10 by 20 square so we're gonna create it now it's a new part and we're gonna give it the same thickness as this I believe it is 25 it's not that one and we say oh yeah, that's a correct point so we just say 10 by 20 here and extrude it 25 mil Copy the appearance. Oops, not that one. This one. And paste it. So the name of the other one was separator. So let's call it separator 2. Okay. <clears throat> now that's it up and say this is the same place as this. Also this is supposed to go like this because this is the longest piece. Yep. Yeah. 
I'm just gonna position it for now to see how well it will be. From there to there is 20. So that's that's what I want. So I'm just gonna put those two faces together and finally say I want that to be in the middle of that face that and that face. As you see, it's completely fine now. Also, we're gonna do the same on the other side. And in this case, we're gonna go like this. So that face and this face must be the same coplanar. And I just have to define these two have to be coplanar too. So that one's done. Yes. So now that those two are done, I can now just finish this for a little bit. And finally, I'm just gonna make a symmetric uh, symmetric com uh, component geometry feature because I believe that other part oh no we're still missing this one so just bear with me a little bit more we'll be done in no time and that face and this face the reason I put these two in the middle is just because I have already did, I already have that um, that that component there that will let me do it. Uh, fix the wall to the to the frame, and then here, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm just going to select the right plane and say I want a mirror component and, and mirror four components which will be that one, that one, that one and the one on the top yes. and they are gonna get created on the other side yes so just gonna say that. So to do this automatically, I'm clicking on control. I'm sorry, holding control to make them symmetric. And I'm, I just wanna make sure that I propagate the visual properties from the original part so the, the material looks the same. Otherwise, it will just look like a blank. All right, so as you see here, it's going through the part where we can change that easily just by saying it's 20. So we're gonna change this to 20. And now all of them will also be updated, but we don't mind about that just because it's gonna be the same anyway. So that's pretty much it for the design itself here you can put any hinges any hinges that you find uh, um, I'm going to try and find one online so I just I can just download it and maybe I'm not sure if I should have a one of these separators down in the middle or up here. Mm, okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. So yeah, that's how it's gonna end up looking. Um, just remember that this is a 
This, this kennel is for a small dog. And I'm just going to show you one last time what I mean. Um, I'm gonna make it look better. And add a walkthrough. And I say, I just want to define the floor, which is going to be the top plane again. So I cannot walk in the air. <laughs> and let's say 1.8 meters. Let's start the walk through. So that's our dot kennel right there. It's got good lightning. And let's just go a little bit faster. And let's go down so I have like a dog view. So for the dog it's gonna look pretty pretty good, pretty tall. Mm. Maybe there will be, if it rains too much, there will be some leakage, but that's something that you'll have to fill up in these parts. So down here it's gonna look good. I think it's got enough room for a for a small bed. You may wanna fill these holes down here. Okay. So one uh, SolidWorks capability is that you can add a, a sunlight. So you can say add sunlight right here and tell it what's the north direction. And oh, there you go. I was gonna die on me. So the north direction will be, you know, the sun goes from East to west, I think. Let me just confirm that um, by changing the time. So this is this is north. So I'm gonna change the time, and the sun is gonna go yeah, something like that. But it's not east to west. It's just it's something like. Um, southeast to northwest, at least in this wall M M A. So you can define the north direction in, in here, so it's more like um, where you're gonna be. So in my case, I think the north is in that way. There you go. Yes, I think that's it. So, as you can see, uh, sunrise, which will be around a.m. There you go. 4 a.m. Sunrise is gonna start looking like that. So at 6 a.m., the sun is gonna go really nicely like that so it's gonna so if we try to go in oh yeah I need to okay, I'm gonna put the sun like here and then just go into my uh, into my walkthrough to see how it looks That's really nice. So your dog is gonna be waking up and it's gonna be looking at the sunlight. Well, at least my dog is gonna be looking at the sunlight. Uh, if you wanna do, if you don't have the same effect when your your dog wakes up, just make sure that you adjust your, your, your orientation of the dog kennel accordingly once you put it in place. 
So now I'm gonna edit this to see how it looks in the whole 24, well, uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Just let it think a little bit, okay. So at 6 a.m. it's gonna look like that. Let's see how it looks at mid midday. So midday it's gonna be fairly fairly illumi illuminated. And as you see, all this sunlight is really good for all, all this light holes are really good for the duck, you know. It's not gonna be, it's not like it's gonna be living in there its whole life. But obviously uh, if it decides to stay there until late it's gonna allow you to do it. So now at sun sunset, let's see how it looks. Sunset looks like it's really cozy. Because it's gonna have that little illumination there which is gonna light up all everything. And if it decides to go to a, to a, to a little map, you can, it can also go just there. And finally, about 10 p.m. when it's night, it will be really dark. So yeah, I think it's really good. Um, let me just edit this. It's at uh, 12. I'm taking out the... So I'm gonna make a render just to see how it looks. Just have to wait a little bit. Oops, wrong position. So if, if that happens to you, it's always a good idea to hide this and double click the scroll so it centers itself. Otherwise, it's gonna take the center of what of the area that you can see and the center of the area that you can see is not the center of the, of the image itself. So that's, some, that's why the image uh, was shifted to one side instead of being on the other one to where you, where you want it to be. Yes, it looks nice. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna change the scenery. Okay, what what are we what else are we missing? So we're missing the the windows. But I think that's something that you can pretty much do, is just create a square and put it there. And the hinges, which is something that we have no control over, because that really depends on what kind of hinges you wanna, wanna buy. Just remember this whole separation, it's gonna be different for the hinges that you get. And I'm just gonna check one thing before I try to do something else. Yes. All right. So I'm going to make like a little demo of the whole wizard. To do that, you have to add in and open your SolidWorks toolbox. Otherwise, it won't work as, as good. So what you do here, it's a assembly feature. Assembly features are basically uh, regular features that can be done to multiple parts instead of uh, instead of being done in one part. The good thing about them is that you can relate two parts to the same feature instead of trying to, instead of making two features in each part individually. So just for that, I'm gonna create a fairly quick, um, sorry, I can show you that. For that, you, you're, you're gonna, we're gonna make a whole wizard. So, so a whole wizard is basically it's gonna create holes for um, and let's see. Yeah. So 
gonna be it's gonna be creating holes for your for your screws. In this case, I want a. We we just we're just gonna get this and get a flat head screw, which is a. Let's say. 0.25 of an inch, normal fit through all and to these two components. So you can, as you see, you can uh, select your standard. You can also select what type of screw you want, the fold size, and the fit is basically how tight you want fold. In this case, since it's wood, we don't really care because we're not gonna pre-drill the wood. But if you want to, uh, you can select just a normal, so it knows where uh, it knows where, so that you know what position you want. Then the end condition, it's uh, you know just like any feature, you can go through all up to face, up to surface, or you can select in a blind, a, a blind value. And you can have you have different options here to make like a counter sunk and create a hex clearance. But for in order to show you that you have to define the positions first, that's what I did first this instead of the other one. Just so it gives you a preview of what you're doing. And here it's gonna select a it's asking you to select the face or you you or it's giving you the option to do a 3D sketch. So it's better when when you try to select the sketch because the orientation is always going to be normal to the to the plane so in this case I'm, I already selected that plane and I'm gonna put two holes on the same face so right now it's just going to ask me for points it doesn't you don't need to create the circles so I've defined two points there and just to be or where I am, you can define these two. You can actually click on lines and stuff like create lines, construction lines, and stuff like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna create three lines. You say these three have to be equal for construction. I'm gonna say that this line. Sorry. I'm going to say that uh, this line must be in the middle, in the center of this one. There you go. Point line, midpoint. I don't know where it went. Oops, I selected the wrong line, I think. Okay, I'm um, gonna create a line, say from there to there. I'm gonna say that this line and this point have to be pierced. This line and this point have to be pierced. Oh, there's no intersection. Okay. And finally, I'm gonna click on this line and make it like that. So what I'm doing is creating reference for these lines, for this midpoint, because I, I wasn't able to just click on that line. You're normally, uh, you can do it, but in this case I did, it's better to, well, it's not better, but I didn't, I forgot to make a, a transparency for this. That's why it's not letting me do anything. And it would be the same for this one. So let's just do that and it's completely fine now. So as you see, I just created some reference construction geometry to position the holes correctly. And now it's going you can select what kind of wood screw you want. Say, let's say that size is good enough. 
So as you see, as you see I chose a countersunk screw with a inch standard. You can also select other other standards and the whole size, which kind of screw. You can have a flat head a screw or an oval head or a socket countersunk, which is basically going to define the ball size. And like I said before, you can have head clearance, so it's bigger in this direction or not, or far side, so you can define how big you want the the head in this case or the angle and since I have the the feature to go through all for just these two components once I accept that when you see it I'm gonna open this part oops I forgot to do something okay I'm gonna edit this and I should have a propagate picture to parts. There you go. So when I open this, we are going to have an exter external reference for this feature right here. And as you see, it's going to have the hole in there for you. And if I, op if I open this part, I will have that hole right there. So you don't, uh, I know it's complicated to make this in a wood, especially in that thickness. But the good thing is that it's gonna be, once you try to screw the the cell, the wood screw, it's just gonna create that anyway. So you don't need to really make it in this shape. Um, I just did that to show you that you can actually do that. And now that I've defined the hole, what you do is you have two options here. If you want to automatically fill all the holes, because you you will have to do the same for all all of them. Uh, you know, holes sizes, holes in the separators, holes in the in the actual in the actual plastic parts. You can Loctite this, so you don't have to use any screws. Mm, yeah, so you would need to create hole by hole or if you are confident enough if, if you're not a perfectionist you could just leave it like that and put the screws inside uh, once you are you have all the parts together because in reality you don't need this for a duck kettle design at least if you were making a machine or something like that some or, or a product sometimes screw heads and nuts can interfere with the other parts and you, you have to be careful about that so you have to find all of them but for this little project, I don't think we need to define all of them at once. So just to, to finish that, we're gonna create smart fasteners. It's gonna tell me a warning, just say okay. And you select which holes you wanna automatically fill. You say add. You can populate all if you had many, but you, you, I just did once. So as you see, it's automatically selected the wood screw that I pre-selected and since I went through all let me just check how this one goes I'm gonna look at the top view and it's probably just up to there I, I cannot see it really well but um, let's just say okay I'm gonna hide this and as you see it's just up to there, which is too much, really. I'm gonna edit this. Um, by by editing, I mean edit toolbox component, and you just say you want a shorter size by dragging this. Let's take a 0 0.75. There you go. There you go. Okay. That's done then. So now the wood screw it's already it's been automatically it's 
screen automatically selected. And just to give it a little bit more realism, you can also edit toolbox component and say down here you want a schematic view for the threat. So once you do that, you'll be able to see the actual threat in the screw. If you don't do that, the threat visualization is going to be like that. So if, imagine if you had like a like a thousand screws, you don't want you don't want them to be all uh, with a schematic view because it's gonna it's gonna be creating a lot of stress in your in your design and it's gonna get really slow for you to do anything. So that's some just something you can do. So in this case, since these were wood screws, uh, you don't want. I, I didn't need any final. Uh, let, let me check the correct name. So I don't want any bottom or top stacks. That means that you can add like washers, nuts, um, what else? Spring spring washers and stuff like that automatically so you select what you want to go first so you could probably just say I want at the end of the screw I want a washer a spring washer and a in a blank nut or a regular nut and that that's what you can put in here and it's automatically gonna create all those components for you but that's only for smart components just be mindful about that if you didn't do this uh, whole wizard, you wouldn't be able to do the smart fastener feature just because the whole wizard is linked to the smart fasteners. If you just make holes with a regular um, screwed, screwed cord, extruded call, extruded cut, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fill that with smart fasteners or any fasteners automatically at least you would need to do one by one and that's a lot of work so it's always a good thing a, a good practice to make holes i mean uh screw holes with the whole wizard if you can so yeah once you're done i think that's gonna be it for the dock kennel i i didn't plan on going this far with the dock kennel but um i think it's worth it so when you just just like a side note, um, just to finish this, you'll have if you want if you're a perfectionist like I said, you may want to do all the holes in the whole assembly, just like I did now, and fill them with your smarter smart fasteners. You can change other screws, and you can actually see if it's gonna work. If you select a, to, uh, a screw that is too big it may have interference between these two so that's something you have to take into account you have to finish the you have to adjust these whole separations for the hinges that you're going to need and other than that it's going to be pretty much done so you can lock tight the acrylic on the sides so your dog can have some lightning not some light and other than that it's all good so that's how we're gonna how we are going to finish our dock kennel that was inside the structural um, structural design. Uh, now we're gonna keep up with our tutorial series with the sheet metal design, and we're gonna create another project which I'm gonna start thinking about so for the next episode. So other than that, I really hope that you guys like this video and I hope your dog is warm and cozy in its new dog kennel. See you next time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and share it. Subscribe and follow me on social media to know when I'm live. And if you wanna support this channel, click on the Patreon button. See you in the next design.